As you start to get older, you here it is, your mom spoiling you. Mm -hmm. um, coming from this great dynamic household, I mean, dad working well, your mom got a good job. This is the American dream. What, what led you to the streets? Me getting bullied. Me getting bullied. So when I was going kiting, they was bullying me for three years straight. So I went to the teachers. The teachers, they wouldn't do nothing. I went to my daddy. He wouldn't do nothing. I said, I'm going home. My nose bloody, mm -hmm. mouth bloody. I said, Daddy, teach me how to fight. Teach me how to fight. They jumping on me every day. They taking my lunch money every day. But he's like, he didn't care. And then my sister, like I said, she's three years older than me. So when I'm in elementary, she already in junior high school. Right. <clears throat> and so you start getting bullied. And you get to middle school. That's now when you meet your real friends. Tell me how you, who was the first one you, you ran into and you met? Well, this is how I went. When I was going, like I say, graduation from Kiton. Yeah. They go to um, the summer before you go back to school, time to go back to junior high school, when I was right. So that summer before school, I met Clark Washington at the uh, swim, Kite Swimming Pool. In the neighborhood, we had a swimming pool in the neighborhood. And that's when the young guys, people go out there, you know, swimming and really being bad up there. Yeah. So it's a guy named Clark Washington. When I, when I, I started hanging out with Clark, so when I started hanging out with Clark, he taught me how to fight. I found a brother. I found a brother. And he took me on Martindale. And when I went on Martindale, changed my whole life. When I went on Martindale, definitely I met um, Clark, definitely I met um, Raymond Peoples, David Comey Young, and all them. Definitely I met all of them. Gotcha. So. Okay, so then at this time, like you say, in the streets, heroin, it, her that boy is, is jumping. Right. When did you become aware that drugs was being sold around you? Well, when I got on Martindale, everything mm. started on Martindale. When I started hanging on Martindale, I started hanging out in dope houses. Mm. Back then, we called dope houses. Trap, now they call it trap house. Yeah. So in the, I'm hanging out in the trap house, and I seen what they selling. I'm really, they really hanging out, smoking weed and drinking. Then they gave me, they gave me some work. I started working in there. And that's when I realized what I was selling: weed and heroin. It, could you tell, like at that time, what type of people was like taking heroin? Like, cause you know, like you see crackheads. I hate to call them crackheads, but you see people like that, like crackheads took executives, people who had great jobs and brought them to the very low. But at that time, neighborhoods are still nice. So who was doing heroin? Was it your professionals well, you, doing it? Well, who? you had professionals, your average person doing it, going to Chrysler, you know, yeah. basically people going who working. Then they then they stopped, they fell off because they couldn't work no more because they get high. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, I would say, Middle age, about 25 to 35, about 25 on up, 35 on up. Got you. No, it, I, wasn't, it wasn't no young, it wasn't nobody young doing it. You had to be about, I'll say about 25 in that area. Okay. So during that time, uh, uh, people say that Eddie Jackson was pretty much the, the drug hero, heroin kingpin at that time. Um, uh, what do you say about that, like, during that period? Was Eddie Jackson really as big? Well, at that time, I didn't know Eddie Jackson. Um, I really don't know Eddie Jackson. I heard okay. about him. Okay, gotcha. But Eddie Jackson came down the line when he um, when he met Pell. Gotcha. That's how, Eddie, that's how Eddie Jackson came into play, through Pell. Okay. That's how Eddie came through, All through right. Pell. Yeah, because, I mean, i seen a couple of documentaries, and it was kind of like... But see, we was out before Eddie Jackson. We was doing this way, you know. Oh, he okay. might have been doing it, but we were, like, the first young guys was doing it. Got gotcha. you. Okay, so here you are, you in the um, trap house or the dope house. Did you ever try it? Oh, no, no, I never tried it. They already say, if, if they catch us doing that, if, we had a thing in Young Boy. If you get caught messing with drugs, they're gonna beat you, you're supposed to get beat down. Mm. You know, but they end up doing it anyway. But like I say, once upon a time, when we start getting, when someone start getting high, they they got brushed off, they got all calf. We kicked them to the, to the curb. So they end up another breed of young boys. Okay. You know. So let's get into the, the young boy story. So here it is, you're on Martindale, mm -hmm. right? You're working in the trap house. At this time, the, the, or the dope house, at this time, is this young boy incorporated already established? No, we didn't, had, we didn't have a name then. Okay. We didn't have a name then. So who put you on when it came to the dope? When, um, uh, I would say Block. Block, okay. And so Block has a big part of your story. How, how did you come to meet Block? <laughs> well, like I said, I was going to Winterhawks, right? Okay. And our friends, like me, Wayne Bowman, and Chuck, we had other friends like Levon Clay, 
And so I met the Vern Clay with the hangout house on Tuxedo. So while I'm over there one day hanging out over the Vern Clay house when I girl, when I lady friends, Block was going with her sister. So when Block, I'm already bad on Martin Deal. I'm already turned from a bully, now I'm turned to nut. Mm. I, I'm hanging out with Raymond on Martin Deal. I ain't, I ain't on Monterey yet. I ain't meet, I ain't meet Bushnell people yet. Okay. So I'm still, but I'm still bad. So at this time, Block come over to Vern house to see her sister Bobby Ann. So when Block came over, me, Wayne Bowman, and Chubby, like I said, we hanging out over there, smoking weed, drinking. It's the hangout house. So when he come in, he kind of tall, look gumpy like. So when he came in, I'm like, who this big gumpy motherfucker walking through here? <laughs> right? So he turned around, you talking to me? I said, yeah, I'm talking to you. Hey, who the fuck is you walking through here? He said, oh, young motherfucker, I'll see you when I come out from seeing my girl. So when he went in there to see his girl, I ain't, ne I ain't never seen Wayne Ballman and Chuck scared before. We don't jump through motherfuckers all through the neighborhood, all Martin deal, all through Dex. We did like we doing that shit, being bad. I ain't never seen them scared, never. But at this time, they they scared. They said, man, you know what that is? That's black. He didn't want to be all the newspaper. He killed his people. All on the news people that keep on killing his people. Yo, he uh, black got famed for killing his people, right? Yeah. His uh his mother, uh, his, his stepmother, his father nursing the maid to get the insurance money. This allegedly, to get the insurance money. So when he he went to trial, he went to trial three times and beat the case. Damn. So so he got the money, he got the money, and his mama got the money, and his sister got the money. You know, the a big ass insurance. Like I say, yeah. he put kills his step daddy, I mean real daddy, stepmother, and nursing the maid or, or that nature. Damn. So he got all that money. That's how he got famous in the neighborhood. So like I say, so when he walked through, I said, who is this motherfucker walking through here? And so when I see Wayne Bone Man and Chuck and Laverne, them all scared man. You don't know who that is? He a killer. That's a gangster all through the neighborhood. He the one, he a, he a guy fall all through the neighborhood. You gonna get us killed, you gonna get us killed. I said, what? So I'm getting scared now. <laughs> so I never seen them scared, right? You know what I'm saying? So when they get scared, I get scared. So when he come back out, he said, yeah, he said, uh, yeah, my man, you talking to me? I said, I had to keep my fronts up. I said, I'm talking to you. So when he walked past me, he was like, he walked past and he stole me. But he didn't hit me for real with his shoulder, right? And he bang, and got on, and knocked me down and got on top of me. And I'm, I mean, get him, get him off me, man. I'm, I'm scared now. <laughs> so when he, when he let me up, he's like, man, when he let me up, he said, man, it's a Cadillac outside, get in it. I said, man, ain't no Cadillac. He said, young motherfucker, it's a Cadillac outside, get in it. I'll be out in a minute. Get your ass in the car. So he went back to to Bobby Ann, right, his girlfriend, Chuck and all them, and Wayne Bone, <laughs> that's special WW. <laughs> Don't get in the car, no, he gonna kill you, man. They about to cry. Be, and LeVon all me, you get in the car, you gonna see the more he gonna kill you. No, I said, what? I'm getting in the car, motherfucker. This a plug. Oh, this shit. a motherfucking plug. So I, I got in the car. They was kind of like, I got in the car. So he asked me, man, uh, he, he come, he, when he came out the house, he was sharp as hell. I'm not real happy he got on, right? He got a Barcelona on. He got a sharp ass suit on his shoe. He got a suit on. You know, he sharp as hell. He dressed nice. Yeah. So when he got in the car, and he ain't in the Cadillac. So we, he got in the car, we rolled downtown. To the show, you know, downtown had a whole bunch of theaters like the Fox Theater, the Palm Theater. So he took me to the movie, right? To see some gangster movie. And at that moment, he was teaching me the game. Mm. You know, he, he was teaching me got to be loyal to each other. He said, no, we got to be loyal to each other. You know, my best friend is Bush Jones. When we leave here, man, we go meet his people. We go to his family house and meet his people. And he said, this is what we do. One of us get locked up. You buy him a, when he come home. You buy him a car. You pay. You give him some money. You move him to your house. This is what we do for each other. This is how we got to do it now. You hear me? This is how we got to do it. He said, I just met you, man, but I like you because you got a lot of heart. He said, can you stay all night? I've been running from home anyway. I said, yeah, I can stay all night. And that's when he took me over to meet the Joneses. Mm -hmm. And from that moment on, from that moment, my whole life changed. Got you. So Block was that guy. And Block was, what, four years, five years older than you two? No, yeah. Because I'm about 15. Yeah, he about 21. Got you. But he a grown man, 21. Yeah. All of them was like 22, 23, Walt many feet, Dave many feet. You know, they older guys, Stoney, they were older, but they was grown men older. 